Hello everybody, in this activity, I'd like you to play around in Onshape and create your very own custom snowflake design uh, using a couple of new tools that you haven't seen before, right? So hopefully you'll uh, have some fun playing around, making your own designs and uh, experimenting a bit. And along the way, you'll even learn a couple new tools to help you out uh, getting even better at CAD, okay? So uh, I made a couple of examples for you. This is the, the newest one I made. And uh, I'd actually just recorded a whole video going through this. And then I thought up, hey, I, I can show them another tool that makes it even better. Uh, so here we go. I'm re-recording it so that we can have the bonus, right? The, the extra uh, info there for you. Here's a couple other examples just to show you what we're putting together, right? I will show you not only how to make these cool symmetrical snowflakes, but also even how to get this. This isn't the bonus. Uh, but a little added piece too is this sort of translucent kind of see-through effect going on, right? We will do that too. Uh, so while you start here and, and you're checking out my examples, start thinking about maybe uh, if you have any ideas you'd like to try to make uh, in a snowflake pattern, right? What would look cool for you? And if you're not quite sure too, you could even search like CAD snowflake is what I searched here. You see a whole bunch of different examples and these could at least give you some starting points on like, you know, what sort of designs you might want to do uh, for these little pointy bits that come out around the uh, the edges of the snowflake. Right. So that's where we're going to start. Uh, let's create a new on shape document. So here at the main screen, I'm clicking create. Document. Uh, we'll call this something like snowflake, right? Give it a name that makes sense. Okay, and right now we should be pretty familiar with the setup for one of these on shape models. So as always, we're going to start a sketch. We'll click sketch. Uh, we'll click the front view plane. And once our sketch is started, uh, we can hide those view planes over here in that left sidebar. Okay, for this, I would recommend we look at this straight on uh, so we don't have any view funny business with like seeing everything at a weird angle. Uh, so we're going to click over here on the view cube. We'll click front. And I'll even zoom out maybe just a little bit so I can see everything important there. Okay. All right. I would recommend that we start. We all start the same sort of way. Uh, that's going to be with two concentric circles and one sort of guideline, one construction line, we're going to call it, right? A line that we can use that's going to help us to draw the lines that actually make up the part. So we're going to set that up now. Uh, and then after that, you'll be able to do whatever sort of cool, funky design stuff you want to do for your snowflake. Uh, so you should click the center point circle. We're going to click down here on the origin point at zero, zero, zero. And right now the dimensions aren't really going to matter. So we'll just make a circle that's a decent size, right? That's fine for me. And we're going to go back. We're going to click on that same origin point and make a circle that's a little bit smaller, right? So for my designs, for how I think about this, uh, this space here between this circle and this circle, that's probably about the thickness of the little pieces of the snowflake that I would plan on drawing. But again, for your design, yours might be a little different that way. Uh, but we should have a couple of circles like this to start, and you'll see why in just a little bit. Uh, the next step I'd recommend we do, and I'm going to zoom out just a little bit for this and give myself some space, is I would click the line tool. And let's start our construction line here. I'm going to click on the origin again. And I'm going to draw a line that's straight up and down and about as far away from that center as I think I might want my snowflake design to go, right? So like the radius of the snowflake from the center out to the furthest tip is sort of what I'm thinking. And maybe I'll ballpark it. It'll be about there. Notice that I've got a little icon or a little sort of hint, a little indicator that's showing me a, a vertical line, a tiny little vertical line shows up just below and to the right of my mouse cursor when my line is perfectly vertical. So that little hint shows me it's vertical. I'm good there. I'm going to click. Okay, the line is going to follow me. I can still make more lines, but I don't want any. So I can hit escape on the keyboard or I can right click 
and choose escape line. And that'll finish that line tool. Okay, so I want to make this line a construction line. So for that, we're going to right click on the line and click construction. You'll see that the line actually changes a little bit. So now we're going to have this dot dash dot dash thing going on. And that's going to be our construction line. This is just a helper line uh, to help us with something in a minute. You'll see. Okay, next up, I'm going to start designing like what the snowflake will actually look like these these parts here. So uh, for this snowflake, for example, if I can I come over to this? No, nah, it's not going to work, is it? Go back. Let's do one of these. Should have done this. Open image, new tab. There we go. So for this, notice I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. I've got six copies of the same design that go all the way around a circle here, right? They all connect in the middle. They're all identical, right? And they just sort of copy and spin it at a little bit of an angle. Uh, so we're going to set up one of these, and then we're going to use one of those new tools to make the copies and spin them around the circle. This one has basically just a straight line going through and two little pieces coming up at an angle, two little pieces coming up at an angle, and this one little, be this one little piece sticking out. Uh, yours could look like that. Yours could be different. Uh, I, I kind of want it. That one I just did had kind of like a crystal-y thing going on with little triangle pieces, and, and maybe I'll do something like that. So for my example here, I'm just going to start right at this end point, and I'm going to click, and maybe I want a sort of a triangle crystal-y thing going on. But for right now, I'm only going to draw the left half, okay? So for whatever you want to make here, just draw one half of it. I'm going to stay on the left side of the construction line. And then one of those tools that we're going to use is going to take whatever we draw. And we're just going to copy it and flip it so that it matches up perfectly, right? So we're going to focus on one side. I'm going to do that right now. Uh, maybe I'll draw something like this, and then it's going to come in a little bit. Uh, and then maybe it actually comes out here and here. So I've got this cool little maybe crystally design. Maybe it comes out and then goes back in a little, uh, but then actually comes out kind of like this. Right, that's kind of neat. Uh, maybe like there. And here it had something kind of like this. And then it connects down to that circle. Right at the end, I want to connect down to the circle. At the end here, I need to connect to that end of the line, right? So on, on both spots, we're going to connect to something. We're going to connect to the circle at the bottom somewhere, right? we got to connect to the circle somewhere. And at the top, we've got to connect to that line. We can't go over. We can't go over this line at any point, right? So everything's got to be on this side of the line. Uh, you could add some other little details too. You just got to be a little careful with it that we don't crisscross over any lines and that you don't come across the construction line. So maybe I want to add a little piece here where actually... Uh, there's like a little space in this. I'm going to connect to the line. I'm going to connect to the line, just like that. Uh, maybe also in here, I can add a cool little little thing. So it's going to be like this and this, let's say. Make the line. There we go. Maybe it's going to look like that and that. So this is kind of like if you've ever cut a snowflake out of paper, right? You're going to make one little sort of weird looking corner of it. And then because you've done all the folds, when you unfold it, those little weird looking cuts unfold and, and are copied all around. That's basically the same thing we're doing here. Uh, so I've got this set up. I'm done with my design on my little piece. Uh, now here's where some of the trickery comes in, some of the magic. Uh, I'm going to escape the line tool. I can right click and hit escape line or I can just hit escape on a keyboard. And now let's mirror, right? We're going to use a mirror tool. I'm going to drag a window, click and drag the window around completely around. I've got to get past, right? Past the bottom of that line there. I've got to make sure it's all in all of those lines that I drew. I'm going to let that go. And you'll see those lines are highlighted orange. Okay. The circles aren't highlighted orange. I don't want to mirror them. The construction line isn't uh, highlighted orange. So I can do that one more time. I'm going to come all the way up from the top, click and drag a box. Make sure I get 
the whole line, every one of these lines in, let it go, and they're copied. Next up, up here in our sketch tools, one of these, it looks like an L, a little dashy line, and then a backwards L sort of a thing, right? That's our mirror tool. I'm going to click that. And now these are already highlighted. It's telling me select a mirror line. So if I've got the parts here, I need a line that it's going to copy and flip them over. That line is our construction line. So just click on that construction line. And check it out. That all got copied, flipped, right? And now I've got this nice symmetrical piece here that I'm going to be able to rotate around for my snowflake. Okay, once your sketch is set to rotate, and we'll see how this looks. This is a little thicker than I expected, right? Look at how thick those pieces are. Let's see what it looks like. Uh, I am going to extrude. Let's click on our shape. I want the circle too, right? So I got to make sure that circle is included. And that's a little thick for my taste for my snowflake. So maybe I'll try 0.1 as the extrusion depth and I'll hit enter. Maybe that's a little thin. What do you think? 0.25. Let's go with 0.25 on mine. You'll, of course, choose a depth that's right for your design. And then we'll hit the green check. It's looking kind of cool so far. I don't know if it's snowflakey, but it's looking pretty cool. All right, next. Let's take this one little piece of snowflake and spin it all around and make copies of it to make it look like a real snowflake. To do that, we have to find the circular pattern tool. It's right here on my screen now, uh, but I had to get to it with this little down arrow because before it had linear pattern up there, and that's the uh, three gray squares and, and one white square. If you click that down arrow, you should be able to find circular pattern there. That's the four gray circles and their cylinders and the one little white cylinder, right? Circular pattern. I'm going to click that and get into the tool. The circular pattern is going to take some 3D feature, some part, some object on the some model, right? And then it's going to copy and paste basically over and over. However many times you want it, it's going to paste it. And each time it's going to rotate it a bit. It's going to do it around a circle. So our circular pattern, it's going to copy the thing over and over around a circle. Here, entities to pattern. What are we going to pattern? This thing, right? So we'll click that. Now highlighted red, axis of pattern. It's going to spin it around a circle, but what's the axis that it's going to spin it around? That's why we made at the beginning this circle bit here. This is going to make it really easy. I'm going to click axis of pattern, and I'm just going to hover on the inside face of this hole and click there. And see, as soon as I did that, that gives us that axis of this, that, that main center axis of the cylinder or of this hole. That main center line, that center axis of the hole, is going to be what we spin that piece around and do the copying. So there, around a 360 degree, so around a full circle, it's copied four times. One, two, three, four. And I can change this number. What if we do six? Right? If we do six, it looks like that. That's kind of neat. What if we do seven? Hmm, seven looks a little funny, but that's still kind of cool. Nine. Ooh, that's getting funky, All right? 11. That's starting to look pretty solid, right? I don't know if 11 might be good. 11 might be a little much. So here you can play around with this a little bit. Let's go back down to like eight. Ooh, eight's kind of neat. I think I like nine. I'm going to stick with nine on this one. I think that looks kind of cool. Okay. If you change the degrees here, which you're more than welcome to do, right? 270. Notice that's, that's not going to give us a full circle anymore. It's going to stop at that number of degrees. So if you want that full circle snowflake, you want to keep that at 360. Okay, but you can change the number of instances. And then when you're happy with it, we'll hit that green check. So here I've got my snowflake design for this example. Okay. How can I make this look a little more snowflakey? Well, we can hit this little view options thing, change to shaded without edges. And right there, it's going to take away those black outlines. And that's going to make this a lot softer looking. 
right? Maybe a little more snowflakey. Uh, you can also click and drag a box around everything. And then right click it and choose edit appearance. And for however many parts you have, I copied it nine times, so I've got nine parts. You, you'll have a different number there probably, but we'll click that. And now you can choose. Maybe I'll make mine this sort of light, light gray. And then down here next to the box of color where it says A1.00, that's how transparent it is, right? So right now it's fully opaque. It's it's 100% there. But if you drag this down, it's going to get clearer and clearer and clearer, more and more see-through. So maybe you want to go with like a 0.7 or something and click that green check. And now you'll see it's actually a little bit see-through as well. And there you get a, a pretty cool snowflake design. Now, one other little top tip for you is if you want to do a little extra on here and make this perfect, right? You saw that I just sort of played around and put lines wherever. But if you want to make this a little more perfect, you might want to put some dimensions in. Uh, so with that, I'm going to show you an example for one of the snowflakes that I did here. Uh, this one came out kind of cool. And actually, no, I, I kind of want to see if we uh, change this to like a nine. What does that look like? Oh, that looks kind of cool with nine, right? Uh, what about with 11? Yeah, it's not bad with 11 either. See, that look, could look kind of neat. I could change this over to that uh, without edges. Yeah, that's kind of cool too. So this design here, I actually took some time and made this uh, a lot more perfect. And the way that I did that was in my sketch, I used construction lines and dimensions. Okay, so if you want yours to be a little more perfect, don't have to but you might want to. When you start off with your circle and your other circle, and then we make that uh, con first construction line in the middle here, and we do this whole bit, right? Construction. When you set that up, you might want to make some other lines too that are just going to show you where everything lines up. So here's our end point, but I added a line going across here to show where those ends would be. I added a line going across here to show where it comes in and connects to this and connects to this. Also, I use that same line to get the uh, these little pieces over here that sort of come up at this angle and the same thing over here, the piece over here. So how would you do that? I mean, you can just make lines, however you make lines. Uh, if you hover over a point, like an end point of a line, and then move, you will you should see a little orange dotted line that follows your cursor. So that's giving you a hint that, hey, right now you're lined up to this point, right? Now I'm not, but if I go down a little bit, hey, right now you're lined back up to this point. So I can use those hints. I can start and finish my lines in a nice lined up way if I'd like to. Okay, so I'll click that. I can hit escape to get out of the line. And I can start another line and go down here. Mr. McDally, how did you start that line without clicking the line button? That was magic. Ah. You do this enough and you start learning some of the keyboard shortcuts, right? An L starts a line. You want to go a little faster starting your lines, hit L. You want to go a little faster starting your dimensions, hit D, right? You'll start a dimension. Ooh, circle. What do you think circle is? Up. Oh, you're right. C, not so bad, right? So you can learn those little shortcuts. But we've got dimension. Uh, we could now go this line and this line are hmm, 0.3. Let's make it 0.35 apart. And maybe this line and this line are also 0.35 apart. And in this way, I can go about making a little grid of lines. And you might want to change these actually to uh, construction lines too. So maybe I've got a line here, a line here, a line here. Okay. Um, I can uh, highlight all these and right click and make them construction lines. So this won't mess up an extrusion, right? A construction line is just like a guideline for when you're drawing. Uh, and when you go to make that 3D extrusion and stuff, it's not going to cut the, the shapes up into weird pieces that you have to do a bunch of clicking. Uh, the extrude should ignore all these. Um, and you could just go through, do your dimensions. Maybe this end of this line to here, that says 1.0. So let's make that an even one, right? Here to here, that's going to be an even one. So this way, I can make this whole thing nice and perfect, 1.75, let's say, right? 1.75 here, too. And if I give myself a little grid, then when I make my lines, 
now I've got something to match up to. So maybe it goes here to here to here, but then it goes up to here and then it comes down to here or something, right? And then over to here. And you can see how that would give me a nice set of points uh, to work from if I wanted to. Uh, here, I did this on the other side. You could do this by hand. Same thing, bing, 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 right? And this will be perfectly symmetrical. Or just do it on the one side. And then use that mirror. And that could be a good way to do it too. All right. So hopefully right there, you've got some good ideas for what you might like to create, right? I'd like you to play around with this. I'm going to go back into this one because this one's pretty cool. I like this one. It looks like every time I go into it, I'm going to have to turn off those edges. So there's my shaded without edges again. Here's the, uh, the final snowflake that I'm going to go with. I can't wait to see the ones that you come up with, right? So play around in the program, make something cool looking. Please take a screenshot when you're done. Uh, send it on, on the assignment. And uh, I hope you have a wonderful break and uh, some happy holidays, uh, a nice new year. We'll see you in just a few days. All right, bye, everybody.